Thanks. Great. Okay, well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Dyer Foundation. Uh, you may be aware this is not actually a Daiwa event, really. It's organised by the SOAS uh, Japan Centre, Japan Research Centre. So you don't have us to thank, although we are providing the booze. So you've got to thank us for that. Um, uh, just a couple of housekeeping announcements to make. Uh, if there's uh, a fire alarm, it won't be a drill, uh, it'll be the real thing. Uh, please don't use a lift in that instance. If you could go downstairs uh, and go across the street and congregate on the park side of the, uh, of the road. Um, and also, if you've left any valuables in either of the cloakrooms, we don't monitor them. So if you could, uh, if you've got anything valuable, like a laptop and a bag, probably best to bring that up and keep it up here. That's pretty much enough for me. I'm just going to introduce briefly uh, Dr. Helen McNaughton, um, who she joined us in 2002 uh, and lectures on economic, business and labour issues in contemporary Japan with broader East Asian context. Um, and, but first of all, we're going to have the SOAS Minyo group, uh, the uh, world-renowned Minyo, Minyo group. Uh, world-renowned? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, well, I'll, I'll blab a little, and when I start talking too long, just go. <coughs> but, yeah, um, I'm David Hughes. Uh, I'll just name names here. Hibiki Chikawa is the Europe's top Tsugarajami Sun player, in case we haven't run across him. <laughs> Orlando Byron, very active in many music, theater music, and other things, but. Akari Mochizuki, a uh, top singer of folk song in Enka in these islands, too. So, the reason we're here, I started 40 years ago doing research in Iwate, a little inland from here, and I drove the coast then, and it was beautiful. I went back again a year after the 2011 disaster, not so beautiful. I was there again two years ago. It's coming back, and I can't wait to hear the lecture because we're going to learn a lot about the current situation. But that's why I suddenly felt I had to force my team, part of them, I've got 20 people, but I picked three, to learn a couple songs from Hamaichi. And then I also have only ever sung one of these before. So we're going to do it. Now, the first song, uh, you've got the lyrics up there, if it matters to you. And just, you'll notice uh, both of these songs talk a lot about the fishing in this town. Uh, it's a harbor town. And uh, fishing was, uh, for a long time, the main industry, but you'll also find during the lecture a lot of other industry rose up, too. And uh, anyway, so just enjoy, and I've really twisted their arms. They've hardly had time to practice this, so I hereby appreciate their efforts to sing this song before I have to do my song. So please, Kamaishi Hamauta, the beat song of Kamaishi. Thank you. 
for hosting us here this evening. We're here tonight for our annual Beasley Lecture because SOAS and many other universities are on strike, so um, thank you to some of my SOAS colleagues who have come along too. Um, but it was very kind of them to let us use this venue at the last minute so that we could still hold the event. Um, and particularly I wanted to hold the event because I'd already invited Nakamura san to come over from Tokyo and we'd already got very generous funding from Brendan at the Great Britain Sasakawa Foundation to have our lecture this evening. So thank you very much. Uh, Brendan and, and GBSF. Um, so Nakamura and I first met about nearly a decade ago through Janet Hunter, and we were both working on the historical consumption, uh, consumer, what's the book again, Janet? Historical Consumers, <laughs> Everyday Consumption in Japan. And, and Nakamura was researching railway passengers and the consumption of train travel, and I was researching the consumption of rice cookers by households, and now we're both sort of doing rugby research, although I'm, I'm really just dabbling in rugby research just for fun, but he is doing serious Kamaishi City research, longitudinal surveys in Kamaishi City. So I'm really delighted that he's come from Tokyo to give this talk. Um, he's a professor of, in business and economic history at the Institute of Social Science at Todai, and so I'm really delighted that he's come along to talk to us about Kamaishi City, um, about... Um, various issues that are so hot in Japan, depopulation, industrial and economic restructuring, and of course sport. So please welcome him here, and uh, he's going to talk for about up to an hour, then we'll have time for Q&A, and then I will invite you downstairs for sake and other beverages. So welcome, Nakamura-san. Yeah. Okay. Hello, uh, everybody, and uh, uh, thank you very much for coming. Uh, today, uh, <coughs> I present the crisis thinking in the regional Japan that's uh, related to Kamaishi uh, story. So, uh, one of what my major is the international economic relation of, of major Japan. So, uh, and uh, uh, Japanese imperialism written by Professor Abizli uh, is one of the important classic literature of that uh, field. Mm -hmm. So when I was a graduate student at the Kyushu University, uh, I had read it and uh, surprised how comprehensive uh, viewpoint he had. So I'm truly honored to invite it, uh, this prestigious memorial lecture. So, uh, at first, the self-introduction. Uh, my main subject uh, is an economic history of Japanese film during uh, from late 19th century to 20th century. Uh, it includes a railway history, uh, the, Jap uh, the Japanese industrial revolution from local and global perspective, 
and oral histories of managers of labors in uh, post-war uh, post Japan. My first book, uh, Blue Book, this book, uh, book <laughs> is uh, the formation of Japanese railway in late 19th century uh, was uh, included uh, to the first category, the first category. The second book, uh, Japanese Industrial Revolution from uh, Local Perspective, oh, this one. <laughs> so uh, it uh, was included to the second category. And the recent book, The Trading uh, Locomotives, The First Globalization and the Development of Japanese uh, Japan Railway, this locomotive one. It uh, had relate, uh, related to both categories. And in uh, 2002, uh, second, I started oral history of workers of uh, Japan uh, National Railway at the Tosu City uh, in Kyushu, South uh, Prefecture in Kyushu. It published in 2006. Uh, entitled The uh, Memories of the Poesu, the Oral History of Railway Worker in Tosu. This one. At, uh, after that, I challenged to study post war Japanese history uh, using the oral history method. And the next uh, research uh, f uh, field is the Kamai City Iwate Prefecture in Tohoku. This book entitled this book, this one. This book entitled the uh, Memories of Friends: The Oral History of Worker in Kamai City Work was one of the uh, outcomes of uh, that project and the cross relation to this uh, lecture. So. Uh, the purpose of this lecture uh, is to examine the crisis face, uh, facing post-war regional Japan, taking the Kamaishi city as a case study. Kamaishi had to deal with the state of the uh, of crisis uh, ca uh, common to all provincial cities in uh, uh, post-war Japan. Deep population, uh, de uh, decline of key industry, and disasters. The mixture of different crises com uh, complicated the uh, response of uh, regional communities. So how ca have Kamei City attended to deal with these crises in the past? And how are they attempting to deal with uh, them in the future? <coughs> these are our research questions. This lecture is fruits of the Kamai, uh, the uh, fruits of the crisis thinking Kamai survey conducted by the uh, Institute of Social Science at the uh, University of Tokyo, and also it is result of 14 years of general regional uh, research project on Kamai City uh, by the ISS. Uh, this is the contents uh, in the. Uh, uh, on, uh, of the lecture. At first, I'd like to introduce the Kamai City, and second, I'll describe the history of our research project at Kamai City from 2006. Third, I try to explain the structure of multi layered crisis uh, and how to <coughs> respond to the crisis in post world Kamai Ishi. This part is the main body of this lecture. Last, I'd like to discuss how to overcome the regional uh, crisis. Let's start the introduction. Kamase City uh, is located uh, in the southeastern section of Iwate Prefecture at the center of the Sandik Coastal Line. Nowadays, the city is a small rural town in Tohoku area which uh, population is around 33,000. Uh, but until the uh, 1980s, it was an uh, industrial city which was called the town of iron and fish. A uh, fish were related to the uh, things. <laughs> the uh, steel industry includes the Kamei Steel Work, Nippon Steel, Rail, uh, Nippon Steel Corporation, and the fishery uh, flourished because 
there were good fishing fields and area nearby. In addition, Kamaishi is also famous for rugby town. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, one of the venue of the World Cup rugby last year. So originally, the Kamaishi area, there were the iron mine uh, pro uh, producing rich iron ore. So in 1857, the uh, construction of the first Western style best furnace in Kamaishi. It was uh, it was the uh, oldest West, uh, Western style breast furnace in Japan. In 1874, uh, the Kamaishi Steel Work was established by the government through technological transfer from the UK. After them, until mid 20th century, Kamaishi was one of the leader of the modern steel industry in Japan. The picture shows the Hashino uh, furnace remain, which is uh, one of the world heritage related to the Japanese Industrial Revolution. During the uh, 1950s, the uh, Kamaishi steel work support, uh, supported uh, uh, Japan's post-war uh, reconstruction. In 1960, the Kamaishi work has over uh, 12,000 workers. <coughs> Thanks to the success of steel works, the population of Kamaishi city rose rapidly, with the population more than 80,000 in the <coughs> early uh, 1960s. However, the restructuring of the steel industry began in the late 1960s. At, uh, and at last, the breast furnace was shut down in 1989. Nowadays, they were leaving behind the wire rolling mill alone. Okay, this, uh, this is a, uh, to, uh, the, uh, nowadays Kamaishi uh, still works, and here is a rolling mill. And this is near the uh, breast furnace, but that is, uh, that is not, that is a, uh, uh, electrical uh, plants. Mm -hmm. The next is a fishery. Uh, fishing was another main industry of Kamaishi since the early modern period. However, the deep sea fishing and offshore fishing were declined due to the oil shock and the uh, establishment of the uh, 200 uh, nautical mile system after the 1970s. The last is rugby. Nippon Steel Rugby Team, so-called Kitano Tetsujin, uh, won the Japanese uh, national title seven years in row from 1978 to 84. Wow. But in 1990s, the team gradually weakened and reorganized from the corporate team to the uh, club team in 2001st. So, in uh, March uh, 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 2011, uh, uh, the huge tsunami struck the coastal area of Kamai City. Kamai City was seriously damaged by the tsunami and its coastal, uh, uh, coastal area had been completely uh, broken. <coughs> Dead or missing people were 1,064 uh, in Kamai City. From then, the Kamai City uh, re uh, re uh, reconstruction project had been doing. At that, at that time, the World Cup rugby played an important role in it. So next, uh, we sh I show you the uh, promotion video of the rugby. Okay, the, uh, then let's move to, uh, on to the uh, section two. In this part, I'd like to explain uh, that why we had studied the Kamaishi survey in con uh, chronologically. Our relationship between Kamaishi began with uh, ISS uh, Institute-wide project, Social Sciences of Hope, that's uh, in Japanese, the Kibogaku, in uh, 2006. 
Having taken on the theme of the uh, social sciences of hope for which uh, they had no model and coping with how to study the social phase of hope. So, uh, we uh, visited Kamei City in January 2006 without a clear idea of how to proceed. Driving, this, uh, uh, driving by the idea that uh, hope is what uh, lay beyond the uh, uh, stable uh, 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 setback and uh, 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 behind, oh, sorry, up, up, up. Uh, the, uh, sorry, the this, the sec, uh, the Kamal city would be yearned uh, in, inside into the topic because they had explained a uh, repeated cycle of the hardship and hope. Thus, the social sciences of hope Kamal survey had begun. But because of the social sciences of hope had brand new field. It, it was uh, difficult for, uh, to uh, formulate hypotheses uh, uh, beforehand. There was no choice but for the project to be a, a community survey for the purpose of discovering theme with the final goal of developing hypotheses. In this regard, it also presents an opportunity to take advantage or of our uh, strengths, namely interdisciplinary research in the social sciences. So then, 30 researchers from the uh, disciplines of uh, law, uh, politics, economics, sociology, and history visited to Kamaishi numerous times to conduct uh, a variety of survey and uh, investigation at the same time and in same location employing method for con uh, considering the social phase of hope and general com uh, community surveys. Kamaishi's uh, history, current situation, and challenges are gradually discovered by the <coughs> intensive interview and the questionnaire survey conducted uh, in 2006. By 2008, uh, we uh, formulated the hypothesis that following three factors are essential to recovering a community's hope. The first, the uh, continual reorganizing, building of local identity, and second, sharing of hope, and last, formation of network within and outside local community. And the key uh, keyword learning through all three factors is the dialogue. Then, in 2009, two books, uh, Reproducing Hope and Connecting Hope, were published. Yes. With the hypothesis developed from uh, work in Kamaishi in hand, uh, we headed to new region in which to continue our uh, investigation. That was Social Sciences of Hope Fukui Survey, which carried out from 2009 to 2013. Uh, the project was also large-scale general committee survey, uh, which also involved 40 researchers. It is during the Fukui project Kamaishi was struck by the huge earthquake and tsunami in on uh, March uh, uh, 2011. So then, in September, uh, we launched the Memories of Disaster Oral Histories project. It aimed to uh, creating a record of the disaster employing oral history method. The uh, project resulted in the uh, uh, collection of interviews from uh, 60 individuals by 2012. In 2014, a book was published entitled The Social Sciences of Hope, uh, People in Church. Throughout the project, we continued to think about what aspect of Kamai City had changed and what had not, as a result of Kamaishi having 
experienced a major event. At the same time, we came uh, to feel the need, uh, feel the need for multi-layered investigation of Kamaishi's past, present, and future of the regional uh, recovery. In 2016, the crisis thinking Kamaishi survey had been begun. At first, we only forced on Kamaishi's response to the Great, Earth, uh, Great East Japan earthquake. However, as the investigation proceeded, we began to see aspects of various crises beyond the earthquake. Further, we uh, discovered that it was the complex structure of these crises itself that complicated a uh, complicate regional uh, crisis response. So then, the multi-layering of crisis became a keyword. Regions faced multiple overlapping crises that uh, differ in uh, dimension and time scale increasing the possibility that dealing with uh, one crisis will cause another crisis. For example, uh, constructing a, a massive seawall and to rise, uh, <coughs> rise the land in uh, response to the tsunami, tsunami are expensive and take a long time, which can delay the region's recovery and uh, accelerate the depopulation. In addition, the fact that these multi-layered crises progress <coughs> in parallel while in, uh, inf uh, influencing each other is shared by many regions and not just Kamaishi city. If that, it, uh, that is the, the case, how have Kamaishi city and its residents attempted to deal with uh, this crisis in the past? <laughs> and how are they attempting to deal with uh, them in the future? Next, we will move on to the sec section three. The objects of uh, this part is investigate structural problem of crisis in regional Japan, taking Kamai City as a case study. At a local level, there were three category of crisis. <coughs> First, acute crisis. Uh, resulting from the damage of the war and national, uh, natural disasters. And second, stepwise crisis caused by the decline of core industries. And last, <coughs> chronic uh, crisis such as depopulation. Kamashi is a stable case study for examining how communities have faced response to and are attempting to deal with multi-layered crisis. Keeping this point in mind, uh, let's now clarify the uh, multi-layered uh, structure of crisis in Kamaishi. There was a tsunami, but the naval bombardment during the war war was worse. This co uh, quote was uh, selected from the oral history of an elderly uh, Kamaishi resident who had experienced the naval bombardment in, two, uh, in, the, in World War II. It compared the damage of Kamaishi city following the tsunami to the naval bombardment. It should be kept in mind that uh, underlaying this uh, comparison is uh, determines the uh, spirit of Kamaishi residents that we uh, got back on our feet after the terrible experience of the naval bombardment, and we will get back on our feet after this as well. Connecting to the image of damage by naval bombardment are the memories of Kamaishi's uh, rapid recovery and economic development during the high growth period. Keeping it, in, keeping it in mind, let's compare the damage caused by the acute crisis experienced by Kamaishi over the years. 
Tamanish was struck, uh, struck by several tsunamis, including a major sandy tsunami, which caused huge damage as evidenced by the over 50% death rate and this uh, destruction of 70% of buildings. On the other hand, look at the uh, uh, destruction, uh, destruction caused by the naval bombardment. The uh, naval bombardment, uh, the major tsunami and the naval bombardment is uh, here. The, uh, the Yes, the, uh, the da death rate is uh, 50, over 50 percent. Uh, neighbor woman, ah, sorry, neighbor woman, the, the, the number of the uh, deaths is uh, nearly 700, uh, and the uh, uh, destruction rate of the city center area is nearly 50 percent. And March uh, 2011, the massive tsunami struck the Kamaish again. The death rate of the, uh, this tsunami is estimated to be 3%, with 1,064 uh, uh, lives lost or missing. The number was similar with the neighbor bombardment. See, uh, and the, see these uh, pictures. The, the, this one uh, was uh, uh, the damage by the naval bombardment, a little bit small. The, here is a river, and uh, here is a uh, uh, Kamaish steel walk. The main target is here, but the, uh, the more damage uh, there. This is a city center. So in this time, the, here is the uh, Kamaish steel work, and here is the city center. The old city center were all uh, were damaged. That's, that is the same, uh, same to the uh, neighbor bombardment. <coughs> so uh, ne uh, next, uh, let's identify the uh, characteristic of Kamaishi's response to the acute crisis by comparing the city's recovery after the naval bombardment to its recovery after the tsunami. The September uh, 1945, just after the end of the war, the Kamaishi City Council took a, a decision to construct the 1,000 worth rest, uh, restoration houses in the Kamai city center. The city they did not wait for financial assistance from the National Treasury to begin its work and took a uh, proactive step to the, uh, obtain the necessary fund by getting loan from banks. Then, such self-funding ended up rapid recovery from the war damage. Similarly, Kamaishi began, began a rapid recovery effort just after the Great, earthquake, uh, the Great East Japan earthquake. In May 2012, Kamaishi developed a basic uh, restor restoration plan. At that time, they refused to raise the land in the city center because it need, uh, needed long this, uh, construction period. If they choose the uh, rise the land, residents could not wait it, and the population would be accelerated. That said, the two uh, cases were similar so far as a recovery effort was started immediately after each disaster. So uh, the next, uh, let's examine the, uh, Kamai how Kamaishi had to deal with the stepwise uh, construction of its key industry. A town of iron fish and rugby. 
the common amongst these uh, three elements is the fact that they had all uh, their golden age in the uh, 1970s and 80s, <coughs> after which they un uh, underwent stepwise uh, construction uh, uh, and decline up to up to today, where they were uh, managing to survive. In addition, the slogan Town of Iron and Fish was first inter uh, introduced around 2005, at which time the number of workers at the uh, steel work had dropped to, the, to its lowest level. Oh, sorry. The, this uh, uh, figure is uh, uh, employer, uh, employee in Kamei Steel Work. The peak time is here, but after that, the decline rapidly. And the next is the uh, uh, blue line is uh, uh, the transaction volume of the fish market. Fish market is similar. The uh, peak has uh, is <coughs> was uh, uh, 70, uh, 1970. From that, the uh, transaction volume was declined. So, the steel and uh, uh, fish, the town of the steel and fish, were uh, uh, set in the uh, 2005. Oh, sorry. 2005 is the lowest level. Mm. Up. <laughs> Up. So, uh, the to, uh, to cope this stepwise crisis, Kamaish came, uh, uh, came up with a uh, proactive ma uh, measure to support the local community. Regarding the steel industry, the steel works began to uh, drop, uh, develop, and uh, upgrade technology at its wire load factory and to uh, uh, fo uh, focus effort on the keeping the factory in Kamaishi. And then they successfully developed the steel code for, uh, for larger tire one of the new high-end products at Kamaishi. This one, this one is a steel cord. On the other hand, Kamai City uh, created employment, employment opportunity by introduction, uh, introducing new business and attracting companies. Uh, this action was intended to prevent sudden shrinking of the local economy. We see this figure from the uh, 1970 to 80, although rapid industrial developing, uh, development all over the country in Japan, uh, the output of manufacturing, in the, uh, manufacturing industry of Kamaishi was declined. In, in this time, the, uh, all, uh, all Japan were uh, rising because the high-speed uh, growth uh, area, uh, era. But at that time, Kamahishi was declined. However, in, uh, two, uh, in 1990s, the trend had changed. Uh, this, this one. The bottom is uh, 1990. After that, Kamaishi's uh, output were rising. What happened? This recovery, uh, recovery uh, reflects favorable performance of the steel work wire load plant and the successful uh, attracting of companies to the area. As shown in this figure, the uh, value of supplement for uh, metal product and uh, machine uh, ma products and machines uh, grew rapidly from 1995. In contrast, the steel shipment uh, fell uh, until 2000, but 
From 2005, the output of the steel industry started to increase again. Uh, this is uh, uh, steel. The, uh, the, steel uh, the ratio of the steel was declining until the 2000, but after that, the uh, ratio was uh, rising. It is, uh, it is a fruit of effort by Kamash Steel Work and Kamash City to uh, 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 respond to the stepwise crisis. Kamash City has been en uh, able to uh, maintain the existence of the iron and fish or the steel and fish thanks to its response to the stepwise crisis. <coughs> It is against this backdrop that the city's identity is summed up by the slogan Town of Iron and uh, Fish was formed. And it is uh, helped by the uh, designation of Hashino, uh, Hashino uh, fa uh, no, Furnace Remain as a World Heritage Site in 2015. That said, the effort to uh, regenerate Kamaishi based on the city's historical legacy as a town of iron and fish comes with uh, challenges. Last, I'd like to examine the progress of uh, underpopulation in Kamaishi. Please see this figure. This is a, a population of Sorry. This is a, a population in Kamai City, the blue, uh, blue uh, bar. So the, the peak is uh, uh, 1960. That the, uh, nearly uh, 80,000 people are there. But from that, gradually decline the uh, population. So, and the uh, population standing below uh, 40,000 uh, 40, in 2010, it's just before the tsunami. The tsunami, the 2010, this is uh, just before the tsunami, but the, before that, the uh, population were quite declining. So, the population were accelerated. Uh, in this area. So main uh, reason for the uh, depopulation was a decrease among the uh, uh, decrease among the young due to the lack of uh, employment opportunity. So after the disaster, the attracting <coughs> company were essential to in terms of uh, creating population uh, uh, employment opportunity for younger generation. Since the earthquake, uh, seven new uh, company had been attracted, and six company had set up shop in Kamaishi of their own accord. The thirteen newly. Uh, a newly arrived company included five companies in the marine product proceeding industry and four companies in the distribution or transportation industry. Particularly, the later uh, companies are uh, hoping to take advantage of Kamaishi's access to the uh, trans uh, transport. This is uh, uh, the map of the Iwate prefecture, and the Kamaishi is here. And after the disaster, the Sandik Expressway, here is the Sandik Expressway, were opened, and the Kamaishi Expressway, uh, this is the Tohoku Expressway, and the uh, uh, Kamaishi Expressway was there. The, 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 open both uh, highway. And the interchange of expressway had located in Kamai City. In addition, Kamaishi Port, 
here. <laughs> Tamai Shipport uh, <coughs> was uh, restored just after the disaster and succeeded at attracting a uh, container sh uh, ship. So then, Kamaishi gained the locational advantage as a, a good distribution hub on sandy coast, coast after the earthquake. Effective use of Kamaishi's advantageous infrastructure is a key to Kamaishi's future economic development. On the other hand, uh, we, uh, if we accepted the uh, continued uh, gradual depopulation, it is necessary to consider the compact city. Kamaishi city uh, 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 constructed a lot of disaster recovery public housing unit in the city center, city center destroyed by the tsunami. Here is a uh, recovery public house. Here is a city center of Kamaishi. The main street is there. That is a, a big shopping mall, the Eon. And uh, here is a, oh, oh yeah, here is a, a city hall, uh, the, uh, the new uh, big uh, city hall. And maybe here, here has many shops. And this uh, uh, recovery house, uh, recovery uh, uh, public house. So, uh, Kamaishi has, uh, and uh, while uh, at the same time improving urban function, the shopping mall and the uh, uh, city hall, and uh, of course the shopping mall has a clinic. So that is very convenient for the elderly uh, uh, people. So uh, in so doing, Kamaisha succeeded in uh, creating a compact city-like urban space by chance. OK. In this lecture, uh, we analyze the multi-layered structure of crisis faced by Kamai City, uh, by Kamai City from the standing point of acute, a stepwise and chronic crisis. So then, uh, is it possible for the uh, local community to uh, res uh, respond to this multi layered crisis? Professor Genda, who is a co-leader of our uh, project, uh, pointed out that the mind of bricolage is key concept of crisis thinking. This, this book is uh, the first uh, output, outcome of our uh, new project. So you know, uh, the bricolage is used by Levis de Ross in originally. Uh, it means that the skills of using whatever is, uh, is at hand and uh, uh, recombining them to create something new. And Levi-Strauss uh, compared to, uh, the working of the bricolure and uh, engineer. Using this concept, Professor Genda has discussed that accumulating bricolage is uh, essential for response, mm -hmm. responding to the multi-layered crisis. But I think the uh, combination between the engineering and the bricolage is more important. <coughs> oh, sorry. <coughs> it means that the relationship between both uh, concepts is not conflict, but incorporation. Actually, Tamai City seems to be uh, responding to the uh, crisis by combining the both way of thinking. For example, they are attracting a company using the uh, giving advantageous advantage of infrastructure. Speedy uh, reconstruction brought a compact city by chance, and copying the decline of key industry and 
the reverse of local identity. All of them had not systemic, systemic, uh, system, uh, systemically uh, planned, but connected each other. Then, as a result, the construction of Kamaisi seems to be well going. Recently, Kamaisi city again surfaced damage. Oh. The, this time from the typhoon that struck, uh, struck the Kamaisi city on the October of the last year. The typhoon damaged to many residents, uh, transportation infrastructure, and the operation of various uh, business. The disaster also uh, caused the cancellation of the World Cup Rugby match between Canada and Namibia that had been scheduled for the uh, 13th October. However, both of Asri and Spectator were completely on board with Kamai City's people's first response to the disaster and are, uh, and are put to work as a disaster relief volunteer. Image of rugby players cleaning up mood with were <coughs> broadcast around the world and this uh, displayed to the globe Kamaishi's uh, and the feet of all spirits and uh, even in the uh, midst of the uh, repeated crisis. In addition, November 2019, Kamai City was presented with uh, an award for character at the World Rugby Awards. In conclusion, I'd like uh, to let the uh, last phrase of our new book this is advertising, this is my <laughs> new book. So, so uh, entitled Crisis Thinking of Regional Japan, A Case of Kamaishi. But in Japanese, the Chiki no Kiki, Kamaishi no Taiyo. Even after coming face to face with a crisis, Kamaishi uh, keep getting back, uh, back up without hesitating and seek to use the crisis as a turning point for the, for the next Japa. There is no doubt that Kamaishi's experience have uh, much to offer in terms of in, uh, insight, insight related to crisis response at the community level. Okay, just in time. Thank you very much. It, it, it's all. My uh, presentation is over. That's fantastic. So um, we have a good half hour before the drinks, um, and we have some roving microphones. If anybody at the back, I think people at the front can probably just shout out uh, any questions or comments, but people at the back could have a microphone. If, so hands up if you want to ask a question or make a comment. Here in the middle, and then one at the back after that. Where the finance came from for the construction of the public housing after the tsunami? Uh, so sorry. Who, who, where did the money for the recovery? Okay, houses? okay. Uh, of course, that uh, uh, national project. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the uh, Japanese government were uh, support to uh, constructing the uh, the recovery house. But they're permanent. They're not. They're not. Pre, they're permanent housing, aren't they? Yes, permanent but, housing. Not, not like the temporary but, but, uh, Of course, the uh, Kamai City were a uh, little bit uh, paid. Yeah. But uh, that is a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So mostly nationally funded. Yeah. There was a question at the back there. Two questions at the back. Uh, yes, I've got two questions. Um, one is I, um, I, I had a very moving experience of visiting Kamaishi a year ago. Um, so I'd like to have a question there about that. The sea walls that have been built uh, both in Kamaishi and in many other places along that coast, mm -hmm. um, in engineering terms, have decided as necessary. But if you talk to the local people, um, they talk about the way it's cut them off 
um, that people no longer feel connected to the sea, that the children don't know anymore what it is to play on the beach. Um, can, does that, did any of your questioning and surveying bring out any uh, views of that seawall? Of course there were other people who said the wall was necessary. I mean, uh, there were people who had mixed feelings. But I wonder whether your uh, work reflects anything on that. Um, and can we take question, that question first? first. Yeah. 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 Yes. Let's take that first and then you can that, ask your next one because it's hard to remember. Yes. So the, the sea walls. Of yeah. course, sea wall is very important. Uh, but that in the Kamai Sea, there has two ways to uh, the response to the uh, tsunami. The first is a high sea wall in the, uh, the Unosuma area that has a rugby field. They had a high Sea wall. But in central Kamaishi, uh, the city center, not. Because the, the, two, uh, the reason was uh, two. The first is uh, they had the. Uh, the big. Uh, it is very difficult to. <laughs> and the. Uh, the uh, Sea wall in the water. <laughs> that is oh, yes. it, it's out, that's right, I've seen it. It's a sea wall that's out at sea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, like a break. The double. Yeah. Double uh, block yeah. the uh, sea wall. Yeah. So, so they, uh, they don't uh, the high sea wall. They, mm. they could not, uh, they did not uh, uh, construct the high sea wall. Yeah. That is lucky. Be, the, uh, it is a uh, uh, maybe the Kamaishi uh, city center is very lucky because the uh, two block system are there, mm -hmm. so that is rapid construction uh, reconstruction were uh, were doing. I mean, I think, as you know, because you visited, that the stadium, the rugby stadium is eight kilometers north yeah, in yeah. a little village. And unfortunately, there they do, along lots of those little villages, they put these massive sea walls, which is blocking off the village from the sea now. But in the main cities, it's, it's not quite as, mm. as bad in that sense. So what was your second uh, question? My second question is to do with depopulation generally. <coughs> of course, in some, uh, the, the tsunami has accelerated in some places. Population. What do you what do you think the correct strategy is if you're looking at it from the Tokyo government? Should you be concentrating the population in larger centres like Kamaishi, or should you be rebuilding every single last community? Yeah, the depopulation accelerated uh, uh, depopulation is of course that is a serious problem, but maybe the the both the Kamaishi residents and the uh, uh, Tokyo government uh, could not uh, treat it. That, uh, we, be, uh, so we have to uh, the accept that situation and the other uh, response are needed. Uh, maybe the compact city is one of the, uh, the, uh, the answer. Of the uh, against the depopulation, and in, uh, Kamaishi is very lucky because uh, after the disaster, the uh, they uh, reconstruct the uh, recovery house in the city center, and uh, uh, yes, that uh, they uh, construct the compass city by chance. But uh, this is uh, not uh, ordinary. Uh, in the uh, sea coast area in Sanriku. So it is a uh, uh, very serious problem for the, not only the Sanriku area, but the other uh, rural area in Japan. I think it does raise a very crucial question, though, as you said. So taking the rugby one again, that, that village was eight kilometres north and wiped out. And arguably, you could have just not rebuilt that village or built a stadium there. But they took the opportunity to completely rebuild yeah. the village. And now it is part of Kamaishi City, but it's not really when it's eight kilometres north. So I think it is a, a valid point that you raise. Is that the right way to go about it? But I think if you ask local people there, it's absolutely for them the right response but arguably other places maybe not but 
it's a tricky, it's a tricky regional yeah, yeah. Uh, situation, I think. There, there was a question there. Yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, in the context of Kamishi's economic decline, I'm wondering if it's accurate to really talk about Kamishi sort of building up the mythology of it, pulling itself by its by its bootstraps to rise again. Um, I'm really interested in how you're feeling about the central government role in this, and because it strikes me that in other parts of the Tohoku Coast, there's a tremendous amount of tension between what the center has decided to do and basically just reorganizing massive infrastructure projects, which are effectively in, in certain communities are undermining their relation to the sea and so on. I feel like your story is a bit kind of centered on the <coughs> myth of Kamishi as a kind of like willpower or gaman sort of context. <laughs> when I think actually the, the, the mobilization or in fact the cash for this and the political leverage for it is coming from the center. Feel he's going to destroy your hope theory. But <laughs> <laughs> so he's saying, is there a, is it a myth? Is it sort of not really real reality that Kamaishi is rebuilding itself by itself? And he's saying, is there not real tension between the government, yeah, I, the national government, yeah, and yeah, these local yeah. communities? Is it? Are you saying too much about mm -hmm. Kamaishi doing it by itself? Essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, yes, I, I, uh, yes, that is point. I understand that uh, the both uh, there is the conflict, the both uh, uh, the actor. So uh, basically, the Kamashi is very lucky. <laughs> so because the, uh, the the construction of infrastructure were um, maybe uh, not for only Kamaishi, but the, the other uh, Sandy coastal area. But the Kamaishi is very lucky in the interchange, and they had the port, so they recover uh, smoothly. But the, yes, but, but mm, it is very difficult mm. to, uh, yeah, the difficult point. So they've had a bit of locational luck mm, yes, from luck. that, rather yeah. than other places, which, as you pointed out, probably didn't have yes. any luck or hope. Or, um, I would say that the rugby story, though, they did actually do it themselves. There was no, there was no need for mm. them to bid to be a host city. They absolutely did that themselves through the Scrum Kamaishi organisation yeah. that he talked about. So the, the infrastructure and the uh, fishing and the steel was probably a different story and more tension, <coughs> but I think that rugby one, albeit you know, short-lived maybe, was bootstraps and local initiative very much so, I would argue. But I think there was another one at the back. Yeah. yeah. Seeing some nice familiar faces. Thank you all for coming along in such a risky environment that we have now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, I have two questions. Uh, the first one is that, um, so uh, you um, mentioned that uh, one of the ways to revitalize the Kamai city was uh, to create uh, employment opportunities for uh, younger generation by inviting uh, several uh, companies. Uh, my uh, question is uh, how uh, was it uh, possible? So did the mm -hmm. city like, uh, provide any uh, financial incentive or uh, did you mm -hmm. What is yeah. that? So when they tried to attract yeah. new companies yeah. and younger, mm -hmm. younger, younger people, people. What incentives did mm. they offer the city? Uh, was yeah. it finance? Was it you know office space? What, what, what was it? That yes, they... office space is very important. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Kamaishi is lucky too because the, uh, there are uh, many land for the uh, factory mm -hmm. because the uh, steelworks has a huge uh, factory, but they are empty. Mm. So, the, for example, the uh, Eon, that is uh, city center. At the shopping center. Shopping center, yeah. the Eon. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's very sensitive. Yeah. He, the here street. is uh, uh, the place of the uh, Kamai City Walk. So, the other uh, factory were located in the uh, uh, city walks. So, the maybe the uh, that is point one point, and second point is the uh, this one, the very lucky 
for the infrastructure was uh, were, uh, in, uh, improvement. Mm. So the uh, company, especially the distribution or the transportation company, were located. Want to locate it here? Yeah. And were they reusing the old steel work mm. buildings, or were they just using the land and building new offices? Both. Both. Okay. Both. Right. And any financial incentives, tax no, advantages? No. No. Okay. Uh, What's your second well, question? Oh uh, yeah. And then um, another question is that um, so uh, were there any role uh, in this uh, revitalization of the city by like a civil society or organizations? So if you can. Any organ, any local organisation? Ah, no, 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 a civil society, a civil society. Oh, civil society. Like NGOs, yeah? Oh, NGOs, ah, or civil society ah. groups, or. Unfortunately, Kamaishi, uh, the uh, N NGO or the NPO of Kamaishi is very weak. Because the Kamaishi city, city council is, uh, has uh, powerful, and uh, uh, their officers were very uh, excellent. So the, they organize all the societies right. and the industries. So the uh, the non-government sector were weak. Okay. It seems to be one way or the other in Japan. You either have a strong mm. local community council yeah, or you yeah, get the yeah. end. It doesn't seem to be to be both often. Um, David and, or should we take this question and then you? Yeah. I, I don't mind if you want to go first. So. No, go on. I've said you. <laughs> <laughs> so I was wondering, like, I, I look at some other cases of, of depopulating place in Japan, and sometimes it feels they don't quite get what's going on. It feels like the reaction to it is just asking for one more government grant, finding one more natural feature to concrete over, and then looking around wondering what went on when the construction dog jobs disappear after a few years. But um, you, you saw that with yeah, they got the seawalls as, as, as well, but for, for some reason Kamaishi has realised that, according to your presentation, that that, that is not the way forward, that that won't help recovering. So they did their own thing. They, they, they you know, they, they found new, perhaps slightly unorthodox ways to get the steel back, get the fish back, get the rugby back. I was wondering sort of what's, what's Kamaishi's secret there, um, <laughs> apart from being lucky. Um, what's, what made it so that Kamaishi, more than, more than some other uh, local mm. municipalities in Japan, um, got its head out of the sand and thought, right, we're, we're, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're actually going to, we're actually going to, get past this. Mm. So what made Kamaishi successful? Yeah. yeah, yeah. When so many others were. So. I want to know it. <laughs> but yeah, but the, like uh, the f uh, one uh, reason is that, that uh, the uh, local governor, or uh, not the local officer, were very excellent Kamaishi. Local government. Yeah. Mm. And uh, uh, the second point is uh, maybe the steel works were very important for the Kamaishi community because the, that's the size of now, nowadays, size is so small and the shrinking, but the, uh, the OB, uh, the retired people, all boys, all boys, <laughs> boys or the residents were there. So they are very powerful and uh, they, uh, they got the uh, uh, money, because the pension is good. Mm. <laughs> so the, 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 that is maybe different from the other uh, local community. Mm. My sense is too that they're not reinventing the wheel there, are they? They use it like your bricolage mm -hmm. scenario. Yeah. So they're using what they had or have, yeah. steelworks, but they're upgrading it to produce the radium. Mm. Uh, you know, they use it, the fishing, presumably. Yeah, yeah. You know, so they're using what they have already, like you very mm. well pointed out, but in new ways, which I think helps, doesn't it? You're not completely starting from scratch with something completely new. Well, one other very, oh. very quick point of what you just very said. Very quick, because I think um, David wants to well, when, when, you, when you said it was uh, partly because of the particular abilities of, of, of the... Uh, local officials, how good they are. Are we talking about the elected officials or the unelected officials? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that, 
that very bit difficult for me. <laughs> so is it is it local councillors and a, and the mayor or is it industrial leaders it is or sense. is it? Yeah. I suppose it's a combination. My sense mm. is it's a combination, but yeah, co- yeah, that is combination. That that because the uh, local officer <coughs> were uh, that, yes that the steel work has uh, the excellent uh, the. Uh, People, yeah. So they uh, argue, uh, argue was they discuss each other, so that uh, local officer will accelerate mm-hmm. to uh, the ability, and uh, their viewpoint mm-hmm. was so very, very wide, mm-hmm. and they look at the, not only the uh, Morioka. Morioka means uh, uh, the cap- uh, local capital, mm-hmm. but they uh, direct to the Tokyo. I see. So they don't. I, I yes. So they got a direct line to Tokyo. That that, that, that is that is one of the uh, uh, point of the Kamaishi's uh, recovery. Mm. They have a very good steel museum there too. Mm-hmm. If you're interested in the steel museum. <laughs> right. Um, in Morioka, the year after the disaster mm-hmm. of 2011, and also twice since then, I have visited what they call uh-huh. Chako Nomikai. This is tea drinking ceremony mm. for people whose homes and villages were destroyed, and they had to be relocated inland. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, a few of them had relatives they could live with. Maybe your daughter lived in Morioka. A lot of them um, had no place to go, and they had to. F- they, they were given housing for a while, and. I, f- I wondered what it was like when you lost your village, and I remember the first time I went, and I was talking to very old people who mm-hmm. lost their houses, and I'd say, I, I, I bet you're very homesick. You want to move home when you can, right? And a couple of them said, oh, no, no, Morioka is much better. <laughs> and I, I, I don't know now if, if the local population that had to move is homesick? Do they miss their homes, or did they realize what well, once they moved to a big city that actually that old village was not wonderful? <laughs> I don't know if this question came up much in your research. And uh, uh, <laughs> that is that is a difficult point too. But the one thing is the uh, uh, temperature is the different uh-huh. temperature because the uh, the coastal line was warmer than Morioka. Morioka has many snow and the uh, temperature is uh, low, low. So yeah. for the elderly people, that is very hard condition. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and yet they seem to prefer that. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay, anyhow. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what the data is on people mm. moving out and then coming back in or staying. Yeah. Or, but yeah, um, yeah. I mean, there are geographers and demographers who could tell us that, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hello, well, thank you very much for your very interesting presentation. Uh, but the questions in my mind are, uh, in a way, a follow-up to already you have, uh, the questioner has asked you about the depopulation. Uh, my point is that it's not just the, the depopulation that uh, this uh, Kamaishi town is, is facing, but also as you showed uh, in one of your graphs, uh, the younger population is now about the one third uh, of the population and uh, the elderly community is yeah. about the two third of that. Here, here yeah. is that. Yeah. That's pretty standard in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> so so, so how, how are you... Are you going to deal with it. I mean, it is a ticking time bomb, isn't it? There are now 33,000 population, and about uh, one-third is the younger population, mm-hmm. and it seems as uh, the trend that the younger people keep uh, going out uh, to, to the big cities. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, this is the one problem that I, I consider as a ticking time bomb. It is as serious a tsunami or a, an earthquake that you, you are simply not left with the <laughs> young people who can take the place. The second that follows up from this, because I am a Londoner, and London is a very, very multicultural city. Mm. What seems to me is that Japan is uh, 
resisting. They can see it that in many places, perhaps they could get people from nearby countries, but they are resisting and keeping their homogeneity. Mm -hmm. Don't you ever consider that this is a kind of outmoded thinking? This is a very, okay. and you are just closing your eyes. You <laughs> okay, so you've picked up two national yeah. points. <laughs> so not just Kamaishi. Kamaishi is a standard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a standard demographic across the whole yeah. of Japan, more or less. Yes, yes. Um, so why are they not opening up to immigration? Is the big question that mm. is always asked. Not just the, in Kamaishi. The, <laughs> Kamaishi, uh, the, 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 the uh, population of Kamaishi uh, and the uh, elderly uh, uh, people were rising and the younger generation were declining. That is uh, common to the other uh, uh, rural area. Uh, uh, the, uh, it, it, you are right, the younger generation will uh, uh, go to the uh, city and the uh, elderly were not, so this one. And immigration is a very <laughs> uh, the, the difficult uh, problem in nowadays. So in Kamaishi, has the, after, uh, the before the uh, disaster, they had the uh, few uh, foreign workers uh, there. That is uh, Chinese and the Vietnamese. Uh, that is uh, so called Jishu uh, say that 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 Chinese system. Yeah, yes, that right. So, but that is the number of the uh, uh, workers is very few. So, that is uh, just a trial. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, this is a, a national issue. I mean, Japan mm. now has 2% yeah. foreign population, which is a record. <laughs> so slightly less homogeneous than it has been ever been, but you're right, it is, it is um, 2%. It's, it's rising, of course, um, but it's Hi, only um, around 2%. Now. Just a follow up some questions. So you said uh, your construction or was funded by Treasury. But then you mentioned that after the naval bombardment, uh -huh. which was much longer before, it was self-funded. Yeah, yeah. And I just need a bit of more explanation about self-funded. Um, you said you mentioned about bank loan, and does it mean local government uh, get a loan from private companies or? Yes, and that is point. <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, after the member of uh, the World War II, the, uh, the Kamaishi city uh, loaned from the bank. So the, uh, uh, the debt of the city was rising. So uh, that is a, a crisis of uh, a financial crisis in the uh, 1950. But after that, the uh, steel industry were rising. So the tax from the uh, steel works were rising. So then the crisis were vanished. Uh, so that is very lucky for Kamaji. So uh, at, and, and uh, in this time, the Kamaji did uh, the, uh, got a huge budget from the uh, national tragedy, uh, tragedy. So uh, that is no problem. But yes, that, uh, the, after the World War II, Kamaishi a uh, rapid uh, and smooth uh, action, but after that, the debt, heavy debt, or uh, heavy burden for the Kamaishi city. It's a uh, point. Right at the back there. I'll build. Hi. Um, Hi. I'm a bit off in that. Ask a question that links your earlier work in Kyushu and the Industrial Revolution with the work you're doing now. And that would be that a lot of the areas of Tosu, etc., that you've worked on are now in decline. Mm -hmm. So, using that as a starting point, do you see any similarities and differences between regional 
towns in decline in the northeast of Japan and in the southwest of Japan. Mm. Very difficult question. And uh, basically, the uh, the west uh, the western uh, area of Japan and the eastern area of Japan is quite different. Because the uh, maybe the uh, wealthy people were uh, in the western area, for example, Kyushu. Mm. There, uh, uh, there were many uh, wealthy people uh, there, so they they uh, spend the money uh, for the infrastructure and so on. <coughs> but in the eastern area, there are no, of course, not only the uh, poor, but the uh, the wealthy people. The number of the wealthy people were uh, few, so. The uh, uh, role of government was uh, strong. The, uh, that is high. So the, uh, in this time, the the Kyushu, uh, the Kumamoto earthquake and the uh, 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 East Japan earthquake was quite different recovery process. In Kumamoto, yeah, of course the uh, the government was spent the money in Kumamoto. But the, uh, the volume was few than the uh, East Asia, uh, East uh, Japan asking. The, maybe the East, uh, East Japan area, ha, uh, the, uh, yeah, of course, not only the budget, but the manpower. The, for example, Kamaishi is a core. Uh, uh, actor is a local government, and uh, uh, the other area is the same. But in Kumamoto, the main actor is a private sector. So that maybe that is different between both area. But historical study is difficult <laughs> to uh, compare both. Uh, that may, uh, Meiji and uh, nowadays is a quite different situation, mm -hmm. so it is very difficult to uh, compare both uh, the age. Is it right? <laughs> okay, uh, I don't want the drinks to get warm, so um, <laughs> before I say thanks, I just want to very briefly plug our next week's event. Next Wednesday at 5 pm, we have our final, uh, it's the fourth of one of our JRC sports symposiums it's on women in sport it's not at SOAS um, have a look at our website if you'd like to come along it's on women in sport, 5pm near Euston Station next Wednesday night, which is the the night of the tsunami memorial actually so yeah. it's the 11th of March next week, so if you'd like to come along please look at our website and sign up, but finally I just want to thank Daiwa for hosting Great Britain yeah. Sasakawa Foundation for funding, David for the fantastic start, and all of you for coming along because, you know, we're not supposed to be mingling at the moment, but thank you so much for coming along. <laughs> and, um, most of all, and most of all, yeah, don't get so excited that you kiss. Most of all to Nakamura-san for giving such a wonderful yeah. presentation that crosses into so many different topics that are so hot in Japan at the moment, and uh, for coming all the way from Tordai to deliver it. So thank you so much. For thank you.